This is the story of Alfred Wegener, one cruel dude. So Alfred Wegener is considered a man on a mission. Once upon a time, there was a German meteorologist named Alfred Wegener. So as a meteorologist, it was his job to study maps and climate data. And he was one day looking at a map and he said, you know what? I think those land masses look like a puzzle piece. If I cut out this map, I could take all these puzzle pieces and put them together and they would make one giant landmass. I think that landmass could be called Pangaea. So if I look at that map, what is really happening? Hmm. I think with this giant landmass, it must have just broken up and all the land just floated away. I'm going to call this theory continental drift. So I wonder how I can convince my fellow scientists. I need some evidence. So he made it his mission to find evidence to support his theory of continental drift. So remember, his idea is that all the land masses were joined together in a supercontinent that he called Pangaea. That supercontinent broke apart and the land floated away. So in his search of evidence, Alfred Wegener found fossils. Now, it's not really unusual to find fossils, right? We find them all the time. But his evidence was that this particular fossil of the Mesosaurus was found on different continents. Now, again, that's not unusual that the same organism lived on different continents. However, this particular organism could not swim in a salty ocean. It was a freshwater organism. It didn't have wings, so it couldn't fly. So the only way it could have gotten there is if it was able to walk or if the land masses were joined, right? So to get to two continents, it had to be able to walk its way to those two continents. That's not going to happen when they're separated by an ocean. So he had his idea that this organism had to have lived at a time when the land masses were joined. And afterwards, the land masses, when they broke apart and drifted away, there was these organisms on the two different continents. So it sounded like a really good piece of evidence. So he went to his fellow scientists and said, all right guys, this is what I've got for you. I've got, it just looks like a puzzle, right? If you just look at this map, it looks like the Earth land masses are puzzle pieces. I could put them back together and make one giant land mass. Yeah, yeah, okay, dude, whatever. But now what about this? I found evidence that this organism, the Mesosaurus, is on two different continents. It couldn't get there unless the continents were joined. All right, dude, we get it. You're excited. You're a little crazy, though. How could this have happened? How did these land masses just drift apart from each other? Wegener didn't have an answer for that, but he wasn't going to give up. He continued his search for more evidence. So his next piece of evidence comes from rocks, of all things. So he found rocks of the same age and the same type in mountains. Now, that's not that unusual again, but these mountains, again, are on different continents. If he took these and put them back together, suddenly we have one continuous mountain range. The same age of rock, the same type of rock. So in his mind, it must have formed at the same time when the land was joined. All right, there's no way my scientists can dispute this, so I'm going to take this to them. So he went then back to the scientists and said, okay, guys, I know the puzzle pieces. That's kind of iffy. The fossil is pretty good evidence, but now what about this? You cannot dispute rocks. The rocks are the same age. They're the same type. They're on different mountain ranges, but if I put them together, it makes one continuous mountain range. Still think you're crazy, dude. But now some of the scientists are starting to come around. Hey, this is kind of interesting. Now let's, let's kind of put some of these pieces together. You still got your skeptics, though. How did it happen? Come on, explain to me. How could these land masses have just drifted away from each other? Wegener still couldn't answer that, but he didn't give up. He was going to prove his theory of continental drift. So as a meteorologist, because, you know, he couldn't give up his day job, he had to keep working. He was looking at climate data, and what he found was really interesting. So in his climate data, he found evidence of glaciers. Now the evidence that he found were what we call glacial striations, or kind of stripes in the earth, in the rock, where a glacier has passed by. 
Now that's not unusual again, but its location was. He found evidence of glaciers in areas that are way too warm to have glaciers there. They would have melted. But in addition to that, he found coal. Now coal is a rock, but this particular coal was made from a tropical plant. He found this in Antarctica. It's way too cold to have tropical plants growing in Antarctica. So, all right, guys, this is my job. I'm a meteorologist. I study this. How can they dispute this now? I'm going to go back to my fellow scientists. So again, he goes back. He lays it out for him. I got all this evidence, and now on top of mine, I have found climate data. You know I'm a meteorologist. You know this is good data. Suddenly, more scientists are like, dude, this isn't so bad, right? I, I, I like this. It makes sense. We still got the skeptics, though. How did this happen? Alfred Wegener had all this great evidence, but he could not prove how the land masses could break and drift apart. But he wasn't going to give up. Remember, he was a man on a mission. So he had his puzzle pieces. Remember that just the continents, the land masses, looked like they would fit together. He found those evidence from the fossils of different continents. He found the mountains of the same type of rock. He found the glaciers and coal in areas where they couldn't have existed. He wanted more. So he continued his pursuit of evidence. He wanted to convince his fellow scientists that the theory of continental drift was real. He didn't give up. He died in 1930 while working on an expedition. Unfortunately for him, he died without scientists believing in his theory of continental drift. He just couldn't prove how the continents could drift apart. So after his death, the theory of continental drift just drifted away. And a quote from Alfred Wegener, We are like a judge confronted by a defendant who declines to answer, and we must determine the truth from the circumstantial evidence. And that's how he ended what many considered was circumstantial evidence and not enough to prove what had happened. The end.